Let's set the record straight. Cardio doesn't kill your gains. In fact, cardio is the key to unlocking your true potential in the gym and in your physique. It's no coincidence that the greatest physiques ever and all of the amazing physiques you follow online, pro athlete physiques, all of them do cardio regularly. Most people think that any decent amount of cardio burns through muscle or hinders recovery, but that's far from the truth. Or they think cardio is completely pointless because they just want to look like a Greek god or goddess who cares about a strong heart. I believed that too several years ago, and I wish I had a video like this to talk some sense into me. So now I'm going to show you how the right kind and the right amount of cardio can maximize muscle growth, speed up recovery, and improve your overall health, ultimately leading to a better life and a more impressive physique. So let's get to it. All right, so I hear this all the time, right? Cardio will eat away your muscle, or too much cardio will stop you from building any real size. And it's true that doing too much cardio, especially at high intensity, can cause what's known as an interference effect. This is when you're essentially trying to maximize aerobic endurance and muscle building at the same time. And this simply won't work unless you're already crazy jacked and then you go on a temporary period of training for a marathon. Even still, it's not the best for the physique itself. That said, you'd have to do high intensity cardio frequently with a high impact on joints and muscles, such as running hard for long distances to notice a clear negative impact. If cardio is mostly done at a low to moderate intensity with short bouts of high intensity cardio occasionally, then you actually don't have to worry about the interference effect at all. As far as cardio burning extra calories, that shouldn't be an issue either, as long as those extra calories are accounted for in your nutrition when on a lean bulk, for instance. Now for fat loss though, of course, cardio is a key tool in helping push a caloric deficit over time without having to cut food down as much. So if you're trying to get ripped without steadily scaling up cardio over time, even if that just means steps on their own, good luck. But can it actually help build more muscle, recover better? Any indirect physique benefits to it? Actually, yes. Yes to all three of these. See, any form of cardio positively impacts your health. As I've mentioned in my other videos, such as the one explaining why all calories are not created equal, this physique and fitness game is holistic. That means it includes and is connected to every aspect of your lifestyle. So much so, if your mental health is suffering, your physique's results will too. If you get sick, that's a setback. If you can't sleep well, you're gonna see slower progress. A strong and efficient cardiovascular system is a cornerstone to better health, which means better recovery, better immunity, and many other health benefits on top of that. Now, technically, you will see big health benefits by certain general activities daily, regardless of the intensity. That could mean 150 minutes of moderate to high intensity cardio per week, or roughly 10,000 steps per day at a lower intensity. But in my experience, and based on some of the available data, it would make a lot of sense to do both. General health benefits such as improved mood and reduced risk of all-cause mortality are absolutely great for our future selves and our quality of life, but let's face it, the quality of our physiques is what we're after here, right? Well, better performance means better growth long-term. Higher work capacity means being able to productively execute more training volume or consistently execute sets at a higher intensity for longer. A more efficient cardiovascular system means less interference within a training session itself. Right? It lowers cardiometabolic fatigue, which of course can lower total motor unit recruitment, increase perception of effort, and skyrocket in-session fatigue as a result of this. Yes, I am again calling out all the people out there who claim they need four-minute rest periods on a set of bicep curls to failure just to keep performance somewhat high on the next set. Listen, you just lack work capacity and or you're lazy. Keeping my cardio high allows me to keep performance high even on sets of 10 plus reps for big movements like hacks, squats, pendulums, heavy stiff leg deadlifts, and even the brutal barbell walking lunges without more than three minute rest between them. So now let's make sure you know the right types and amounts of cardio to do. The different types of cardio are really just separated by intensity and duration. So whether you're doing your cardio on a standard treadmill or you prefer the step mill, elliptical, bike, swimming, walking outside, doesn't really matter. Choose the one you prefer most. The cardio modality you choose doesn't change the type of cardio, but it can change the impact in some cases. Running, for instance, has a higher impact on the lower body, while swimming has a very low impact everywhere. Now, the most common form of cardio amongst physique athletes is low-intensity steady-state cardio, or LIST cardio for short. This is a steady pace where your heart rate stays low, usually in the range of about 55% or less of your max heart rate. The great thing about LIST is that it has the least amount of acute impact on lifting strength. No real strain on the body, but still elevating the heart rate enough to burn a decent amount of calories in a shorter period of time than just lifting would or than just doing nothing would. So that's great. It's also possible that LIS can help acutely boost recovery to some degree. By increasing general blood flow throughout the body without placing serious demands on the body, LIS can be a great way to help you feel better on days you just don't feel so good in general and potentially even help on rest days where you might be extra sore, for example. Now, there is a common myth here that many people are falling for, and that is that LIS burns more fat 
while intensity, higher intensity cardio burns more carbs. And so if you want to burn more body fat, regardless of a calorie surplus or deficit, you should just stay in a fat burning mode with low intensity cardio. Now this is wrong. The silly gurus claiming that just read the first paragraph of a physiology textbook, then closed the damn book to go make a TikTok. Any exercise that a lower intensity relies heavily on dietary fat or fat in the blood as fuel, not physical body fat, as that is not really burned significantly in any single bout of exercise. The burning carbs as fuel is just because higher demand equals faster energy required. In the end, a deficit or surplus is going to best determine body composition changes, along with proper resistance training, of course. The cardio is done primarily for all of the aforementioned benefits and or to facilitate a deficit over time. But thinking that list is inherently putting you in some sort of fat burning mode is a myth that should have died in 2007 or some shit, whenever it came out. Other than lists, you have moderate intensity steady state cardio, high intensity steady state cardio, which would include, you know, hard runs, for instance, where you're really pushing for some serious mile times or a 5k PR. Moderate intensity cardio is where we bring the heart rate somewhere around 55 to 70 percent of our heart rate max. High intensity cardio is basically 70 percent or above. Now, intervals can be used on either of these as well, where you switch from high intensity intervals for a short bout and then you switch immediately to a lower or moderate intensity interval. Now this is the popular high intensity interval training or HIT, and actually HIT does seem to fare well in research as far as being an effective way to burn more calories, boost VO2 max, and not really put muscle or strength at risk, all in less time when incorporated properly. Another common myth usually around HIT cardio is the afterburn effect, more scientifically known as EPOC. Now EPOC is a real thing, but it's completely insignificant and won't play any real role in body composition changes at all. It should not dictate whether you do HIIT cardio over other forms of cardio. So how do you actually properly integrate cardio into your regimen? Now, first and foremost, the ideal scenario for doing cardio for minimal interference would be separate from your lifting, six hours away or better yet, on complete rest days where you don't lift. The worst time to do it would be right before your lifting, say within one to two hours of it. If your goal is to build your best physique, there is no reason you should be doing any strenuous cardio whatsoever before your training sessions as training, i.e. lifting, is the priority. However, if you're like me and you don't want to go out of your way and do two-a-days, but you still want minimal interference with your training, then doing cardio immediately after your lifting makes the most sense. Of course, if you're cool with doing two-a-days or just doing fasted cardio in the morning because it's practical for you, then by all means, that might just be the best case scenario then. Next, we want to properly quantify your cardio seat. Many people don't really do this properly, in my opinion. As a coach, I've realized that using calorie targets to quantify and standardize cardio output makes the most sense. This assumes that you are using similar machines and doing similar types of cardio most of the time, so you can either use a fitness tracker or the cardio machine's manual mode as the standard. No, of course, the calories it's telling you that you're burning are not accurate. That's not the point. The point is, by using the exact same measuring tool for total cardio output, you can now standardize output via that modality. For example, I mostly use a step mill or a treadmill for my cardio, and I use their manual modes, input my age and weight, and then I set 200 calories as my target. Well, whether I actually burn 200 calories or not doesn't matter. It's the fact that I've used the exact same input to hit the exact same output on the machine. So if I bump my cardio target up to 250 calories using the same machines and manual setting, then it's going to ensure that I increased my total output. The reason this is the best way to do it in my experience is because it accounts for any change in intensity you may have in that given session. When people say, I do 30 minutes of cardio daily, okay, but at what intensity? It's usually whatever they feel like as long as they hit the 30 minutes, but this might mean that you did way less actual cardio on one day versus another, and this makes things less precise. So, try quantifying your cardio in calorie targets, allowing you to be more flexible as to the intensity you use on that day and how long it takes you to hit it. Of course, with a reasonably reliable output in the end. Now, when doing high intensity cardio specifically for the sake of improving VO2 max, like a sprint, a one mile test, etc., then you're probably going to be going off of time and speed targets instead. And that is usually done with running or swimming laps, for example. Maybe the assault bike distances sometimes if you're a complete masochist. So now we know how to quantify it. So let's set a bare minimum amount of cardio that we do throughout a given week. Start with three to four days a week of say just 10 minutes each day. Whether it's lists, miss, or hit, 10 minutes of any of these intensities won't cause any interference. And this will be your bare minimum no matter what. Cutting, bulking, recomping doesn't matter. There's basically no difference between low and moderate intensity as far as negative impact on recovery when done for between 10 and 30 minutes post lift. So it probably just makes sense to aim for moderate intensity mostly. Also, it's gonna make you fitter faster, which gives you the benefits of that sooner. So three to four cardio sessions per week, but every one to two weeks, make one of those a high intensity session where you're pushing the heart rate. 
if you're running for the high intensity session like if you're running for the high intensity session like i usually do then just make sure that you're not putting it immediately after a big leg session now that you would want to but i'd also avoid putting it the day after as well as both of these could actually get in the way of leg day recovery since the high impact nature of running can cause some damage you otherwise want to avoid now placing a run one or two days before leg day assuming it's not a crazy run or placing a longer high intensity run something like a 5k a couple days after your leg day should not be a problem when it comes to your high intensity cardio sessions or even your daily regular sessions you can progressively overload them just like you would your lifts so record how long it takes for you to hit certain calorie amounts or other milestones like how long it took to climb x floors on the step mill your 5k run time your one mile run pr etc this way you actually have goals to try and beat in your cardio along the way that ensures you keep improving the most important muscle in the body along with all of the other still important muscles of course now from here you're all set scale up your list or miss cardio sessions by output or frequency when you're cutting and as you progress throughout it and then cut them down closer to baseline as you progress throughout a bulk keeping one high intensity cardio session every one to two weeks making sure that it's not overlapping with a leg day if it's a high impact on the legs Experiment and adjust these protocols over time as you build your physique to see what works best for you and where you enjoy or prefer having your weekly cardio at during different seasons or phases of your goal. Lastly, while you can eat back your calories burned on cardio, I don't recommend it for most. I do it at times during transition phases or if things are less predictable schedule wise, but I recommend generally almost everybody simply just set their daily calorie and macro targets, including activity from cardio already. I've been doing cardio after every lift for several years now. Back in my early 20s, when after one of my first dirty bulks, I would break out into a sweat and pant after just walking up a single flight of stairs or even just doing basic tasks around the house or in daily life. I was huge, but I felt like shit. All show, no go. So I started making cardio a normal part of my routine. And then even when I got to 248 pounds on a later dirty bulk, I still felt way better. And all I started with was a few battle rope intervals a few times a week. For years now, since then, I've had a bare minimum target of missed cardio to hit post-lift. Right now, it's about 200 calories worth of cardio, either on a treadmill incline walk or a step mill, which typically is done in between 8 and 10 minutes. You can even see back in my most successful cut of all time so far in the 2018 Cutting Chronicles how hard I was cranking cardio even back then, and I still managed to build an insane physique. These days, being peak bulk, my bare minimum is those 200 calories, and I ensure to mix in some high-intensity sessions once every one or two weeks, and every two to three months, I'm pushing a 5K on one of my rest days, okay? Now, on a cut, those daily sessions slowly go up, sometimes getting as high as 500 calories per session, and I'm often doing a 5K run more like every month. I aim to get my 10K steps daily, including all of this for general health no matter what, and my best time this year for a 5K is sitting at just under 23 minutes, which isn't too bad considering I'm not training for it as often and I'm carrying around a little bit more weight. My typical high intensity workouts are like 10 minutes of different types of intervals on the treadmill, each of which I have recorded and I use to try and improve on every single time I go for them. In fact, I plan on hitting a 45 second sprint interval session today on the treadmill after my push day is done. To truly build the best physique, it's not just about lifting weights. It's about embracing every element that maximizes your growth and performance, including cardio. So we've debunked the myth that cardio hinders gains. On the contrary, it enhances health, recovery, and work capacity, making you a more complete athlete. Incorporating the right types of cardio at the right times is going to help allow you to perform better, push harder, and ultimately build a more impressive physique. So as you continue your journey, remember that becoming the ultimate physique athlete means balancing strength, endurance, and smart programming along the way. Track your progress, stay consistent, and always push your limits. You're not just building a physique that looks amazing, you're building a stronger, healthier, and more resilient version of yourself in every single aspect. We must treat ourselves like true athletes if we are to do that. So for those of you that will join me in doing so, I'll see you at the top.